Yeah, so the humanitarian disaster is still being assessed, but of course there's a real environmental impact as well. And I'm joined by Dr. Gordon O'Brien. Now he is a senior lecturer. He's also leader of the Rivers of Life program, and uh, he's based at the University of Mpumalanga. Uh, Dr. O'Brien, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, I wonder if you could explain to us what exactly a tailings dam is, uh, and what sort of chemicals are typically found in these dams? Great, thank you. Um, Sally, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. So tailings dams are, um, are dumps where the processes or the proceeds of mining activities are stored. So after ore is abstracted from the ground and various uh, metals usually are, are extracted from the ore, that waste has to be discarded somewhere and that's typically stored in these tailing dams. Um, and this is in particular a diamond mine. So all different mines would have different types of tailing dams, for example. All right, so when you talk about waste metals, I mean, I've heard people talk about things like arsenic. What, what sort of poisonous and toxic chemicals or metals are, are left in, in a dam like this? Well, again, um, you know, each of these tailing dams is unique. Um, and one thing that we are can be, be pleased about is that it's it's related to a diamond mine. And typically diamond mining is, is less harmful to the environment or has less dangerous toxicants in it compared to other types of mining activities such as gold. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that there aren't toxic toxins in it. Um, typically in, in modern times, we're dealing with a lot of nitrates associated with the blasting of kimberlite shafts that um, becomes toxic and can pose a, a threat to human li lives and or the environment directly. Um, but it's not generally as, as serious as, say, um, the, the gold mining industry where arsenic, mercury and other toxicants are quite prolific. All right, so you say we're not totally clear at this stage, but normally with diamond mining, the, tox the waste is not as toxic. So hopefully it doesn't have the arsenic and the mercury that we have seen. I mean, I was thinking of, of Ranfontein, and there's a dam in Ranfontein that has been declared radioactive completely off limits purely because of these awful toxins. So we, we're not likely to be looking at a situation like that, am I right? No, no. And, you know, I, I went to school in Ranfontein High, which is just down the road from Robinson Lake, which is dealing with all of that, all of those issues. Um, but no, it definitely is a different kettle of fish. And, um, and, and you know, with this type of mining activities, um, they don't generally use other elements to extract the diamonds. Um, so the impact here is more related to the, 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 the physical structure of the slime itself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, process they've changed the structure of the sediments itself and that becomes a big problem and now that sediment and associated bacterial and chemical processes would now be um, have been distributed across that whole upper catchment of the river which is um, an important catchment area of the the lower orange mm -hmm. uh, or the orange of all catchment so that's our immediate concern is the water resources and not just the local water resources but the regional water resources that may be threatened by the spill. Okay, so the mix of what's in the tailings dam, it might not be a, sort of very toxic on its own, but as you say, what it mixes with and the bacteria that forms. And that's interesting because we did uh, hear from someone earlier who was talking about uh, seeing dead fish. Um, and obviously, you know, that is, that is always a sign that there's something going really, really wrong. Um, so are you saying that if this, uh, the contents of this tailings dam uh, flows into the water courses in the area, we could have a serious environmental problem? Could it be that bad? Very much so. And, you know, consider where it is. So within the, the lower Vol River catchment, the Vol River is one of the world's most heavily utilized river ecosystems. And we know that it, it has, it contains all of the toxic, all the stresses that are, that are flow into the Vol River from upstream, from Joburg um, and the coal mining activities around the Pomalanga region, all the way down to the Orange River. And this spill occurred in the um, upper Rit River subcatchment area, which flows into the Vol River just before it enters the Orange. And the problem here is that this was traditionally actually one of the refuge areas for, for that region. There were uh, a relatively healthy population of aquatic life, including fish, 
and some threatened and endangered fishes in that river itself. So the fact now that there is this spill means that it's going to be very difficult to contain all of this waste that is lying over this broad area. And you can just imagine what will happen after the first heavy rainfall in the area. Um, all of that would then be washed towards the river ecosystems down the rivers. And I think that at the moment would be something that we'd be more concerned about from an environmental perspective is the, the fact that when, as soon as all of the sediment that's lying over such a large area is, area is mobilized, where will it go and what impact will that have on the receiving yeah. environment? Not only the lower vol, but also the important, importantly the orange. This is really worrying, and as you say, it's very difficult to control, particularly if, if the rains come. I want to ask you about um, how much control is there of these tailings dams? Because what we're seeing is that when a mine is sold, it then falls into someone else's hands. And it was interesting, uh, lawyer Richard Spur uh, was tweeting this afternoon uh, that the mine was bought from De Beers, um, but because the tailings are no longer mined, it's not classified as a mine. So it doesn't fall under, necessarily, under the Department of Minerals. And he says it might ultimately fall under the Department of Labor. And he says they, of course, know very little about the environment. So when it comes to control and who's in charge of monitoring these tailing dams, and I don't even know how many we have in this country, but lots of them because we've done a lot of mining. How does it work? So any, any traditional user of a water resource or any activity that has the potential to impact on a water resource generally needs a water resource use license. And we have very good legislation in South Africa relative to the rest of the world. Something that we're all aware of though is the challenge to implement this legislation but the difficulty with the historical tailings like this, so this, the mining operations from, from this Yarkosfontein mine um, emanate from around the late 1800s. So this is a, a very long um, historical mine and associated problem that has, that has, that has spilled in the region. Um, I definitely do think though that the polluter pays principle is still in place and um, the resource directed measures chapter of the National Water Act would still require that any users then have, they have the potential to contribute towards an environmental impact would need to be authorized. It's just, I think, a, a larger problem here is, is who is responsible for the management of their tailings? And is it the owners of the tailings dams themselves? And often, because we have this legacy of, of old mining activity in South Africa, often it's the district municipalities and also the provinces who who then need to take some responsibility for these historical mining activities. So at the, I think for the time being, it'll be quite vague. We know that um, there is an owner of the dams at the moment. Um, I'm sure they will defend themselves um, from any liability. And I, it, this is a real tragedy. And I think it's, it, we should rather take the approach of trying to bring everybody together and try and implement available legislation to clean up as fast as we can. And then, as you suggested, to make sure that this type of, of impact doesn't happen again. We're actually seeing a bit of a trend of late where this is happening um, across the country. There was a recent spill in the Volcha River catchment, which has also had massive ramifications. Um, and one thing to bear in mind is how these wet and dry phases of, of rainfall change. And now with, you know, this it's the middle of winter. Why would you have the spill of such a magnitude in the middle of winter? Well, it probably has to do with the fact that there's so much water saturated in, in our landscape across the country and we're only expecting to receive a lot more rain this year so it's something that we definitely need to be practical about and hopefully manage and and avoid again yeah it's an important yeah. point as well is that as um, weather patterns change it could also have an impact on many of uh, these sort of uh, unfortunate legacies of mining. Thank you so much for chatting to us this evening. Really fascinating. Dr. Gordon O'Brien, Senior Lecturer and Leader of the Rivers of Life Program at the University of Mpumalanga, saying that the sludge is not necessarily immediately toxic, as you would see uh, from a gold mine, but uh, it can interact with the water and create a toxic environment, a bacteria uh, that is not conducive uh, to looking after the fish populations or creating uh, healthy uh, water courses. So definitely a real problem that we have to keep an eye on in Yachasfontein.